what's up VC? Hope everybody is doing well. Just wanted to do a video and show some recent vinyl and cassette, just music related pickups that I've had over the past uh, week or so. I'm uh, going to show the first record I grabbed this past week and this is a 12 inch single the actual title of it is U2 R O K. I have no idea what that stands for, but it's got on side one Fire and the song J Swallow. And then on side two, it's got 11 o'clock TikTok and The Ocean, which were recorded live from the Paradise Theater in Boston, Massachusetts, JC, uh, in March of 1981. Um, so very happy to add this to my YouTube 12-inch collection. Picked up some Animals. This is their album Animalism from 1966. This is a mono copy. And there really wasn't anything on here that I had recognized before. You've got All Night Long, which was actually written by Frank Zappa. Shake, um, Lucille, Little Richard cover, Smokestack, Lightning, The Great Blues track, Hey Jip. Hit the Road Jack, which was popularized by Ray Charles. Louisiana Blues, Going Down Slow. So, kind of in that transition period from when they were just strictly called the Animals to Eric Burden and the Animals, getting a little more into psych rock. Uh, but this is a uh, fantastic album on the classic MGM label right there. I'm so happy to add that to my animals collection. I picked this up. This is a um, two LP deluxe edition of John Coltrane's My Favorite Things. This has the album both in mono and in stereo. The first record is mono. The second uh, record is in stereo, uh, which great album. I mean, just for the title track alone, but it's a little more subdued. There's more ballads on here than anything else, like Summertime, um, Every Time We Say Goodbye. And I think people are used to the more aggressive John Coltrane, like you hear on uh, A Love Supreme uh, or Giant Steps. But this is a little bit more subdued. Not that he doesn't play aggressively at times, but uh, for the most part, uh, it's a little quieter uh, kind of an album. Um, this was released originally in 1961. It's on 180 gram vinyl. The only thing that I wish they had done differently, I wish it had come in a gatefold uh, because as it is right here, um, you've just got this paper sleeve um, that the record comes in. That is the stereo copy. And then this is the mono record. So I wish they would have maybe done a gatefold for this rather than just kind of a, a big old sleeve that houses everything. But one thing that's very cool is it comes with this big booklet here too. Uh, and it's got recording session information, pictures of John Coltrane. which must be from a photo session for the album. But I, yeah, I like the packaging. I mean, I really do. And I'm not going to complain that there's not a gatefold. I'm just saying, you know, I'm a fan of gatefolds. And if you're going to include a lot of artwork, I think, why not just kind of put the expense for an extra? Um, and this is like a poster of the cover. It's just kind of a record side poster. I'm not sure why uh they added that but uh i'm okay with it it this really wasn't um too badly priced considering what you get you get two records uh the booklet which i think is really handsome and nice uh but anyway great pickup uh and one of my favorite john coltrane records Grab this. This is The Cure's debut album in North America. It was called Boys Don't Cry, and it had that as the cover. But this is called Three Imaginary Boys. Um, doesn't have the single Killing an Arab like the Boys Don't Cry uh, compilation does, um, but this is the inner sleeve. 
and uh, the record right here. But, you know, tracks like 815, Saturday Night, Accuracy are on here. And the curious thing is, um, you know, they don't have just a really concise track listing on here. Uh, you either have to, I don't even know that it's on the label. It's not even on the label. Like, how do you know what the hell is on this record? Uh, very curious that way. Um, so I'm not sure what the thought behind that was, not having the track listing anywhere. There really is, there's nowhere that tells you what is on this record. I guess you uh, have to go on the internet and look it up if you weren't already familiar. I know I've got the CD version and that does, obviously, but why, you know, and I, I don't know, I, I'm not sure, but... Anyway, great album. Um, another album I picked up, this is The Police Around the World, and it comes with a DVD. This was this uh, was originally uh, released in the 80s on VHS tape. It chronicles their first world tour uh, in support of the Zenyatta Mandata album, although all the tracks that are on this record are from Outlandos Do More and Regatta de Blanc. You've got Walking on the Moon, Death Wish, so Lonely, Can't Stand Losing You on side one. And then on side two, you've got Truth Hits Everybody, Roxanne, Born in the 50s, Message in a Bottle, and Bring on the Night. And one of the things I was reading is that this is the film that was released back in the 80s. However, it's been heavily edited to take out some of the more controversial parts. Like apparently there's a scene in the original movie where Sting... Uh, kind of curses out a fan who was throwing things on stage, uh, curses him out in both English and French, and apparently that was edited out, and there were some other, I guess they didn't want themselves portrayed in an unflattering light, even though I think it lends some realism and rawness to uh, the whole, you know, live documentary concert experience, as it were. This is on silver vinyl. Um and at some point, I'll probably pick up the CD, too. But uh, glad to finally get some live police on vinyl, uh, since I did miss out on the Record Store Day uh, releases. Um, this is a little new wave, Echo and the Bunnymen. This is an original pressing of uh, Crocodile, Still in the Shrink, which I was very grateful for. Um, and got... Going Up, Do It Clean, uh, Rescue, I think was the single back in the day um, that maybe got some airplay, but happy to have that. Um, and interesting, one of the techniques that I've been trying lately, which I'd read about on the internet, you know, don't, people are saying, don't spend a lot of money on the, um, the record cleaning solutions or like the record brushes or all, I mean, you've got all these different techniques, wood glue or uh, using like the washer where you, the disc washer where you stick it in that machine. People are swearing by this, lick your vinyl. Apparently your saliva has some sort of chemical properties um, that apparently work really well cleaning the vinyl and their taste buds also are able to get inside the grooves uh, of the record to clean them more thoroughly than a regular brush does. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but they're saying, uh, people are swearing by it, lick your records. It saves on solution. You don't have to buy a brush. So anyway, I've been trying that. Going to try that with these records uh, right here. Um, next thing I got, this is a CD, the only CD that I'm going to be showing, but this is The Cure, Perry. Uh, their live album from the early 90s. And this has some deeper tracks that they featured on that particular tour, like The Figurehead, 100 Years, Play for Today, In Your House, A Letter to Elise, Charlotte Sometimes. Um, did not have that on CD before. I had Show, but just not the companion CD of Paris. And... My wife came through for me in a big way on Father's Day with a gift I didn't even realize I was still uh, wanting or shopping for, and that is Paul McCartney, The Lyrics. This this is really heavy. 
Um, but you got all of Paul McCartney's lyrics along with um, Paul commenting on each particular song, giving some of the backstory, uh, what was happening in his life uh, at that stage. Um, and they're all hardcover. They all have uh, book jackets. And yeah, just pictures, notes about each song. In some cases, he's got reproductions of uh, the original handwritten lyrics. So yeah, very handsome package. If you're a Paul McCartney fan, I uh, I know, and I know it's pricey uh, because of just the packaging alone, uh, but definitely well worth it. I've made my way through some of the first volume, uh, but it's just a really enjoyable read, uh, particularly if you love kind of doing deep dives into his songs um, and a really, just a really nice package there. So that is pretty much everything that I picked up. Oh, shit. What did I forget? Oh, wait. Was it a cassette? Oh, yeah. Uh, hold on. Got this cassette. This is The Monkees, Then and Now, The Best of the Monkees. I think this came out in 1986. This is the Canadian version. It's also on Arista Records. But like most Canadian cassettes of the day, uh, it's not really a J card. You've got a full uh, kind of sleeve there with the little hole punches for the cassette. And of course, the cassette is on a black shell. Um, but you still have uh, the kind of liner notes, as it were, that were in the original or the North American Arista cassette. So just a little curiosity. I had the uh, North America version, but I picked this up just because it looked different. So anyway, hope you're doing well. Have a great day and take care.